So normally when we screen movies, there's lots of laughter and clapping and cheering. Cheer and cheer and cheer. It was silent tonight. You could hear a pin drop. I think that's a good thing, right? I didn't stay during the whole movie. I just watched the, the first scene, into the murder scene. And the sound was really good here. <laughs> because uh, I added all these like, uh, low frequencies that in most theaters you don't hear. Yeah. Uh, 17 hertz frequencies that scare people. <laughs> you, um, so that was intentional as well, right? In the production of the film, you inserted those low frequencies, in particular in the front like 60 minutes or so of the film, mm -hmm. intentionally to to disorientate and to create a noise. They, 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 they used, in, in America, they used to have these trucks that would release those, uh, low frequencies to to empty the, um, when there was this uh, manifestation. They, 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 the, the, the trucks would send these low frequencies that scare people, like they scare elephants when there's an earthquake coming on, or whatever. so everybody would escape because of the low frequencies. It stresses people and say, well, anything that can make the movie stressful would be good for them. <laughs> so, uh, it, it is stressful. It's incredibly stressful. I, I think the um, so it, I've been watching films in theaters for over forty years now. The two films that have had the most amount of walkouts that I've been to, I saw I Stand Alone in New York in the Film Forum, and then um, and then I saw this. It was in a theater on it was in it was on La Brea that's now turned into a church, which feels kind of right? Um, but those are the two films that have had the most amount of walkouts ever. You're like the James Cameron of walkouts, but nobody walked out tonight. So how does it feel that 20 years in with this film, 20 years later, and here you are on the other side of the world? I've heard the movie aged a lot in 20 years. You feel it's aged? No, or? people didn't walk out. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I saw many, many times I saw people fainting. In the, uh, during the screening, I was so happy to say, I think. <laughs> so you're saying uh, mostly it was men. It was not women, it was men. So you're saying this audience has, has let you down tonight, is that? <laughs> <laughs> or it's more professional audience. <laughs> uh, well, you're in a room full of fans, so I think I, I think that definitely counts. But the, um, so the reaction to when the film came out. Um, uh, one thing also is when you know what the movie's about, or what you're expecting, but I think the people who were mostly shocked are those who didn't know what they were going to see. And in France, many, many people went to see the movie because Monica Bellucci was in the movie. Because had, they had seen Malena and other movies, so they were very happy to see another movie with Monica Bellucci, and then some of them were shocked. <laughs> also, it was playing on French TV. Uh, and some people would just, you know, sometimes families are watching with uh, kids and the movie is shown on TV. And yeah, I, I heard weird stories about that. <laughs> the, uh, so and also, you know, in France, um, I didn't want to show the, the movie to my nieces. One was 11, the other one was 13, because uh, they said, oh, Uncle, can we see the movie? They said, oh, you're too young. The way that you're, I was afraid I would have a bad image of their uncle. So I said, no, you're, you're too young. But then the, 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 my niece who was 13, she said, oh, but everybody in school has seen it around me. The other day, the teacher asked, what's the most shocking movie you've ever seen? And uh, like half of the kids were saying, I'm a person. So I finally gave her the DVD. <laughs> How did she feel? Oh, she likes me. No. <laughs> um, so you talk, you talk about Monica Bellucci. Um, Let's, let's go back to the beginning. At what point did she become involved? At what point did Vincent become involved? Uh, because they were, and, and just to contextualize this, they were kind of, there's nothing like now, but the closest that they could have been here was Tom, Tom Cruise, Cruise and Nicole, Nicole Kidman. They, yeah, they, they were in cinema royalty back in France. Initially, um, when I showed this movie, uh, I had done just one feature, it was I Stand Alone, yeah. and uh, he had a, Good critical success was like a kind of cult movie in, in France. And Vincent Cassella had seen it, uh, Monica had seen it too, and uh, the third actor, Albert Pontel, had seen it. And uh, I was trying to raise money for Enter the Void at that time, and I could not get the movie financed because it was too expensive, too experimental, and, and um, my name wasn't big enough to, to finance the movie on my name. So, uh, um, uh, I was pushing hard and it was not working. 
So I said, well, probably I have to find another project that would be cheap um, and easy to finance. And I had the idea of doing like a very sentimental pornographic movie uh, that was uh, that finally became Love. But at that time it was called Danger. And one day I, I was in a, in a in a club at night, and then someone said, "Oh, Gaspar, Monica, and I, we would love the." Uh, your movie is stand alone, or uh, why don't we do a movie together this summer? I said, oh yeah, let's do a movie together. And I had in mind this movie, but my other project had a lot of explicit sex contained in it. So uh, I said, yeah, I have a project, but uh, um, do you know someone who could finance a movie with, with some like, uh, 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 no, it's, um, I didn't tell them that there were explicit scenes. I said, so some like, uh, Erotic scenes, and, uh, <laughs> and they said, Oh, you want me to, to the, 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 do you want to do an erotic movie with me? And Monica said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, they believed me. And, so, 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 and we found two producers who wanted to co produce this erotic movie with me, directing as uh, Monica. But they, they saw it was a joke when I said it's an erotic movie, and then I gave them the four pages script of Love, and it was called Danger, but it wouldn't help either. But uh, the, the, the moment they, they read the script, said, "No way, we're not doing this." <laughs> uh, no, they, she had stalkers, and they didn't they didn't know how we, we would manage the, the stalkers that Monica had if we had done the movie. So they said, "No, we're not doing it." But I told them, "But they're free," uh, and they said, "Yes, okay, let's find something else and let's shoot a movie next month." I said, "It's a joke." No, no, let, let's let's we have the producers now. I have you, so let's do a movie and. Uh, we came to the idea of doing a rape and revenge movie told backwards. And the only question was, does it contain some explicit sex in it? They said, no, 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 in this case, it's nothing at all. It's just a rape and revenge movie told backwards. <laughs> <laughs> said, okay. And uh, I had three pages, a three pages script. I found the title like one week before shooting the movie, but on their name and adding the, the, the name of the console, we, we found the money needed to shoot for five weeks. And uh, and uh, yeah, I was surprised that the movie happened. They were surprised, it was like a joke that turned real like a bank robbery. They told you the bank, the, the, the door is open, you have like five minutes to, to rob yeah. the bank. And say, oh, yeah, well, if you don't sing, you just rob the bank. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I knew that it's your account, you need money to make a, to rob the bank with money coming and so I said, I'll just rob the bank. <laughs> so, and, and no one even saw what we were really doing. They were happy to be doing a movie with me, and I was happy, and we shot the whole movie in a chronological order so we could rewrite the, the movie uh, on the way. But, um, and I told them that I would edit it backwards. So the, the, the editing that you saw is the movie that I, I, I wanted to, 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 to release at that time. And also, I, the, the story was too dark, and I thought that by finishing with the beginning of the story, you would be more, more optimistic. Yeah, you, you described Or at least more melancholic. So, <laughs> so you saw the melancholic version to it right now? Yeah. But then the hardcore version is the one playing next. That's the story. Yeah. 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 Everything goes down. Yeah. 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 Never ends. <laughs> yeah. Just many people prefer the other one because it's far more cruel. I like it. <laughs> the, uh, you describe this as uh, a trip from hell, like, it goes from hell to paradise. Yeah, but, yeah, but the paradise doesn't, doesn't really work because, you know, it's just the, the, the door to hell. Yeah. It's, it's just the, 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 it's, it's the, the opening scene of the story. It's like the, 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 the epilogue of, the, of, the, of the, this version. And yeah, you know that everything's going to go wrong after it. And also she even had... In the, in the story, she has a premonition. She, she dreams of a red tunnel, but she cannot read the message that she's sending to herself. So she, she just says, oh, I had this weird dream, but she still goes into the tunnel. How did, um, so the producers that you didn't tell, the producers that you got the money from, that you then didn't tell what the film was, no, no, they they how, how, how did they respond it, it, to it? The, 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 the whole script was just three pages, because I didn't have the time to, 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 to write the script, so I just wrote the sy <laughs> synopsis which was made of 12 scenes of a quarter of a page each, so it was three pages, 12 scenes, uh, and I would put them in separate pages before to, to make sure that the story would work in one sense or the other sense, and then I went with those three pages, and the other read yeah, to the movie, and the rape scene, for example, was just like, 
eight, eight lines long. Like the, the, she, she, she's in the tunnel, the guy uh, breaks her and beats her up, but nothing could tell if the, the scene was going to be 30 seconds, uh, five minutes long, 10 minutes long, whatever. And the, 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 the main fear of the producer was not that the movie would be violent. The, the main fear of the producers is that the movie would not be a short film at the end. Because it, 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 it just had three pages, and they said, "If you need more money, we can uh, we can uh, shoot for two more weeks, whatever." But we need a feature film. You know, we were all surprised that the final result was exactly ninety minutes. The uh, and so as you talk about that script, so as you're now shooting, and, and, and uh, for example, the the character that you see at the beginning, the, the fat guy, uh, he was the main actor in my previous movie. Exactly. Uh, I sent it on. And uh, I had promised him, because he was working for free on my previous feature, I promised him to be in this new movie that I was doing with big stars. I said, oh, you have a part in the movie. <laughs> but then we started shooting the movie chronologically, and there was, I didn't see where I could put him. But <laughs> <laughs> to, to play the, the, the guys in the club, I found the real clients of the, the, the club, and said, oh, we're not put in the movie. And then uh, for, to play the cops, I found real cops to, to interrogate, interrogate uh, Vincent and, uh, and you know, the concept. And uh, the, yeah, the, the firemen were real firemen, the transvestites uh, were real, uh, uh, how to say, sex workers working in the Parisian woods that we, we and said. And the uh, all the locations were real. Yeah, that's what we said, oh, uh, instead of working uh, with your regular clients, you want to be in a movie tonight? Uh, uh, how much do you pay? I said, we're going to pay you the same amount you, you, you earn every night with your clients, but you're going to be in a movie. And say, okay, so, so uh, that, that's how we made almost the whole movie. And I didn't know where I could put the, my actor. And like one week before the end of the movie, he was like, Gaspar, you promised me to be in a movie. Said, no, you're going to have a big part. You're going to have a close up. Like, no, Monica, Vincent, and Vincent don't have a, such a close up. You're going to have a close up. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> improvising. And then, and then I told him, uh, when he said, and, uh, who, and he asked me, who is my scene with, with uh, Monica or with Vincent? Uh, <laughs> I said, no, with a friend of mine, the director who's in a mental hospital. We're, 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 <laughs> 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 and he said, no, no. And, and, and the, 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 the guy was really crazy. The, my friend told me, so, so, and then asked him to be naked on the same bed, wherever. And, uh, and initially he said, Oh, Gaspar, why do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> he was very proud of the scene, and it makes sense. And then I said, What am I playing? Oh, you're playing the same horse meat butcher character that you were playing in the previous movie. So it's like an epilogue to my other movie. Yeah. Uh, um, well, there goes all my questions. Uh, yeah, but back to the script. So, it, so you've got this tiny short script, but as you're shooting, so is most of the dialogue in here? You just set the scene. Everything's in like, yeah. 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 They build their characters. I build. I, I operated the camera. Yeah. I had too much work to take care of the characters. And, and uh, <laughs> is it? Uh, so I read that you know because some of some of these scenes, they really, most of the scenes. It, Continuous takes. Uh, some of them you stitched together digitally, um, but because they were so long, and you're shooting, uh, shooting on 16 millimeter, right? Uh, we shot it on Super 16. Super 16, yeah. And um, then, I know. Uh, uh, actually, we we shot it on Super 16. Then we transferred to high definition video. I edited the movie with an Avid system, and then uh, we transferred. We. we uh, we did the color grading and the, the editing on high definition video, but it was not even 2K, it was like 1K. Uh, and uh, also the, 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 the ratio of the Super 16 is all, it's not square, but it was not seen so, so actually we're using just a little part, half of the, the image of the, of the 16, Super 16. And uh, I'm always surprised to see how different the, the, the movie is because uh, it was shot on Super 16 and edited in low definition video. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the screen, the, the, the quality of the images is yeah. incredible. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, and, and so, uh, this is a question that I have to ask you. As, as you're, you've got these cameras, you're lugging them around, they have re really long takes. Is uh, it true? I operated, I operated the camera all the time. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, 
At that time, I was not, like for climax, I was using a digital camera with a, I don't show you with a square format and I could make the, the, the image spin uh, in post-production. But in this case, I was holding the camera and turning it around. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and, uh, yeah. and it, 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 it didn't work, uh, it would have been a mess to try to create. Yeah, and um, is, it, is it true that you, and yeah, I apologize. Um, so, because these, 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 these shoots so long, and I read that like you were doing coke while you were doing them to kind of pep you up as you were. Uh, <laughs> 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 the camera was heavy. <laughs> and sometimes at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> Don't tell that to your to your nephews or nieces. Uh, oh, my niece, she likes it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you talk about the improvisation. I waited ten years to have you here. I had to. Uh, you talk about the improvisation. Yeah. And the camera, the camera work is improvised. Their dialogues are improvised. And mostly, it's about shooting a first take and seeing how it goes with the actors and then you could we, we could replay because we had a like a, a, a video copy of what we were shooting that we could check and then we would do a second take with sometimes the second take would be longer than the first one and the third take would be longer and uh, yeah for, for the rape scene for example we shot it just six times and for other scenes we, we shot them like three times other scenes ten times but uh, the, the mostly, uh, and it was the same for Climax, it's the last take that is the best one. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, the, everything makes sense. You, you, referenced, you referenced the rape scene, um, and the reason why I wanted to, to bring that up, because you talked about the improvisation that takes yeah. place in the film, but in reading <clears throat> what Monica said about it, she's obviously incredibly proud of the, of the film and her role, and in particular that scene, and she described it, she said that it was, um, she choreographed it, intimately beforehand and then she described it as a dance um what was it like pulling that thing together uh you know i, I put the scene in her hands and the hands of the, the guy who, who actually was his, uh, he was not an actor he was a Thai kickboxer who had played in one movie that i had seen and he was very good in the movie that i had seen but uh i asked him how they would do it and then i just uh, decided where I should put my camera. And the, the, we used a real tunnel that we painted red. It was not red. But uh, since since that movie, I really like not knowing what I'm going to be shooting before I shoot it. I, I don't write the dialogues. I don't, I don't uh, do drawings of how I'm going to do the scene. You just do a first rehearsal, a mechanical rehearsal with the, with the actors or non-actors that you're filming. And then, um, and then I decide where the camera should be, and make it last long. And in, in this case, I did not do cuts. Uh, like I did uh, in my following movies, sometimes I would cut the master shots with blinks to make them shorter, or to uh, start with one take and go to another take. But uh, for this movie, I wanted it to, to be like relentless and without any limits. Yeah, and, and did you feel that as you were, as you were filming it? Is the film that you shot, the film that you edited, like did it, had you already edited the film? I didn't really know what the result would be. And mostly uh, when I saw the movie, I thought it would be probably good by moments, but I didn't think it would be this achieved. Mm. You, know, you, you never know how good the movie's gonna be at the end, but uh, failure is always knocking at the door. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so what I usually do as a film director, if I have a um, uh, five week shooting schedule, I always add a six week with no plans just to do retakes of scenes that I, I could have cut. But there are many reasons to cut the scene. Yeah. <laughs> the, and, and so the film comes out, you premiere at Cannes, it, the audience response at Cannes. Um, and, and I, it was weird because I didn't expect the movie to be in competition at all. Uh, I knew that uh, I, with my first short film and with my first feature, I had been to Cannes and I had awards, and I really liked the, the energy of the Cannes Festival, which is the best film festival in, in this planet. And uh, so I wanted the movie to be screened there, but in any uh, section, it could have been in the Director's Force Night, in the Critics Week, or 
in the main competition. But um, and uh, when we showed the movie to the to to Jerry Fremont, um, there was an issue about its violence, and I said, "Oh, don't, don't worry. But if if by chance you're interested in the movie, uh, put it in competition at midnight." I made a joke, and I didn't think it would work. But uh, it's the only movie that has ever been shown in competition at midnight. <laughs> And I didn't, it didn't get any award. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is that one day I met the Lynch was the president of the jury that year. And one day I met him and he was very friendly to me. Oh, your, your movie was great. He said, yeah, yeah, you know, you were the president of the jury. He said, yeah, of course, I love the movie, but of course we could not give you no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, and people were shouting on through the screen. It was very funny. <laughs> and many of the, uh, there were some guys shouting, we're going to do the same gas part in this whole <laughs> But But you like that, right? And then the critical response, it, it, there's very little in between. There's people that feel the film is a masterpiece, and then there's people that are vehemently angered by that. And that side, that side of response, like, you like that, right? That gives you an energy, you're excited by that? If you get the worst movie of the film festival, or the worst movie of the year, you know you've, been, you've done something valuable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to what extent, so when this film comes out, how did you then segue into, into the next? Because this was essentially the setup, you're into the void as right? Uh, yeah, no, finally, uh, the worry is my biggest commercial success, or my only real commercial success, as you say. And in some countries, it was a, a number one French movie of the year, above uh, Amélie Poulain, uh, <laughs> Turkey, Greece, Venezuela, I don't know why. <laughs> and, and, uh, um, yeah, and then, so my commercial success with this movie uh, made it possible to get the impossible financing for Enter the Void, uh, that, yeah, that was six times more expensive without any famous names on, on it. And uh, yeah, so after this, I finally made uh, Enter the Void, but it took me a long time to, to pre-produce it and, and to post-produce it too. And then also one day I finally did this, did this movie called Love or Danger, which I had proposed to Vincent and Monica, and uh, they, they had refused. And I remember because they were not, in, together anymore, but I remember screening them the movie, and they were together. So, oh, 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 it would have been a funny movie with the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that film, it, it actually played here in 3D. You were here for that. Uh, yeah, that was it. It was shown uh, in Korea town. Yeah, it played the Ace. It played here. Yeah, yeah. the Ace Theater. It was a good, good screen. Yeah, so it's a strange place to see that film. <laughs> yeah, the. Um, and so scrolling forward. And the actor of the of love is here. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. um, so, so jump forward to, to straight cut. How did how did that come about? I, I read that that was. Uh, no, 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 now you've seen the uh, original director's cut. I really wanted the movie to be this way, but then, like, twenty years later, uh, this one was released in two thousand and two. And in 2019, the, the owners of the, of, of the movie called me and said, oh, we want to, to do a new digital master of the movie to release it on DCP because the certified miniature prints are not shown anywhere anymore. And also to, to put it on Blu-ray. So I said, okay, I, I want to supervise the, 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 the new mastering of the, of the movie. And at that time, I was editing another movie called Lux Eterna. So I was in my editing room and I was supervising the, the, the new digital master and said, oh, I'll take all the material. And now probably I can do a, a clockwise editing of the movie for uh, the Blu-ray release as an, an extra. And I did it very quickly. It took me one week to, to, to <laughs> finalize it and to do the, the sound mix and everything. And then the result was so strong that I said, oh, this deserves to be released as a real movie. And uh, so um, I proposed it to the film festival that, that was going on next. It was the, the Venice Film Festival, and they picked up the movie for, for their festival. So now there are two cuts, and I'm very, very proud of the new cut that uh, actually is exactly like the, the way we shot the movie in, 
in a chronological order. And uh, in the in this other cut, probably it's too heavy to watch the two versions the same night. But if you, someone here wants to understand what really happened, you can stay for the length on the screen. Um, and um, um, and this other cut uh, is really more focused on the actors because you understand their psychology is much yeah, better, and and also because of the story is told clockwise. It's not an arty movie that is like a puzzle in your head that you're trying to solve. The, the solutions are all clear, and you also very clearly clearly understand in the in the in the new version that they don't kill the rapist; they just kill some other guy while the rapist is saying awesome, while they can sing bravo, bravo, and you see that the the, 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 the guy is there. And, and you're in that scene as well, right? You're in the, no, you're I, in the, I, you're in the club. In this version, uh, I'm masturbating in the gay club. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 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 the, 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 the straight cut is straight and shorter. So uh, I had to cut that. You took yourself out? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you get a refund the, the desk. <laughs> um, yeah, but the, the, it's, uh, it's shorter, but it's uh, fully uncut also. <laughs> the, and, and is it true? Is it, is it true that there was is it true that there was a, a Korean a Korean I think it was a Korean DVD release of this? It yeah, but it was extra. very badly made uh, because yeah, one one day they, they did uh, a straight editing for, for the um, Japanese DVD release. Okay. Not the Japanese, the Korean uh, DVD release. But I started watching. It was so badly done that uh, I didn't. But uh, I understood that someone could try to do it, so uh, I said, well, if someone has to do it, I, I have to do it. And, and the result was amazing, huh? Yeah. And, and, uh, and Monica was very proud to re release the movie, and she said that her character seems much more important in the other version, because the movie starts with her, and she disappears in the middle of the movie, and also, you see how much uh, Vincent Cassel's character is just behaving as a vulnerable monkey. And so he becomes, he's more hateable in the other version. And uh, the character uh, of Pierre, played by the console, becomes very, uh, almost heroic, even if he doesn't kill the right person. And, and, and he was, uh, I mean, talk about casting. Previously to this, he was known as, as predominantly like a comedy actor in yeah, yeah, he's a friend, yeah. yeah. And, and how did you get him involved? Because it's so counter to what uh, he was a big fan of my first feature, Ice and Bone, and he wanted me to do a movie with him. Uh, and he was very popular in France. And uh, now, he, uh, last year, he got the, like, the French Oscar called Caesar for the best movie. He's a film director now, and, yeah. and he works more as a film director than as an actor. Okay. Should we take some questions from the audience? Is that cool? Yeah, young lady right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to repeat for the audience, so you can, it's probably best if you're in English so I can understand. I'm Argentinian, that's why she said <laughs> The question is, every time you um, make a movie, you're basically dropping the bomb on where does your revolutionary filmmaking spirit come from? Uh, I watch lots of good movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like Pasolini, I like Pasolini, I like Kenneth Sander, I like Murnau, I like, uh, yeah, I like edge directors from all generations. Uh, they make me stronger, or at least they, they, they make me want to make movies. And well, when, when I'm doing a, a movie like, uh, like this one, of course, I'm thinking of the difference, I'm thinking of cruising. Taxi I'm, driver. I'm thinking of taxi driver, yeah, so the, uh, I'm a film buff, but um, you can tell that uh, I also watch a lot of a movie called I Am Cuba. Uh, <laughs> you can see that it's a bit inspired by I Am Cuba also. Yeah. Uh, you said that Gravity on Morphine when you're in hospital is oh, yeah. the best filmmaking, uh, the, one of the best uh, film watching experiences of your life. Oh, that, 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 that's, that's another subject. But, <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you, um, uh, my favorite movie for years and years was 2001 in Space Odyssey that I saw when I was six years old and I was re watching it every year. Until like, even this year I watched it already twice. But um, uh, I spent my whole life 
doing drugs, trying to reproduce the effect of autism in one case. We also made sure that hand when I was six was even better than all the drugs I took after that. But the, um, I had brain hemorrhage for partying too much three years ago, I almost died. And very luckily, that bad experience brought me to the hospital where they gave me a lot of morphine that I had never tried. <laughs> finally, finally, I drank of morphine my whole life, finally got huge amounts of morphine. I was almost dying, and I don't remember the first few days, but on the fourth day, it was just after New Year's Eve, they were playing the French dub version of Gravity on TV, and I had a little monitor on the other side of the room. I was like one, one foot on the other side of existence. <laughs> <laughs> I was pressing the button to get more morphine. <laughs> at night, and that brought me back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Up there, I can survive too. Uh, <laughs> 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 and when I find and she survives at the end, I say, yes, I'm back. I'm back among the living. And, uh, uh, that, that was pretty even stronger than my first experience with 2001. <laughs> uh, gentlemen in, in the yellow cap, this is the first time you've seen the film, and you're watching the straight cut right after, so yes, fire away. Yeah, so I wanted to ask, um, I, I mean this in the most positive way possible, I think if I was to distill the movie down into one word, I'd say miserable. Um, it's funny. Yes. It's miserable. <laughs> A little bit. Some characters are. <laughs> Brian, can we get security? <laughs> <laughs> but, if, if I was to ask you, despite being, I, I'd say, the father of this film, getting all of it together and being so close to it, if you were to say what this film would mean to you in just one word, uh, what would that be? Uh, this is the only movie that now goes both ways. I shot the movie in a chronological version. And from a musical point of view, I knew that I wanted the movie to start with, with a, like a, the female, the, the, the other version of the, 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 the way we shot it. We started with, with a couple, with a gorgeous woman, like the, the, uh, and uh, like a, the most lovely female character that I've shot to the same, probably with a, together with the matter of. Uh, of um, the vortex, but um, uh, so it starts like with uh, long takes, very very peaceful takes, and then when the movie suddenly uh, the story gets broken because of the, the aggression, uh, from that moment on the, the camera it starts speeding up more and more until the end, and also it becomes red, and there are no more women around. Uh, it's all about men. And, and then, and I almost uh, initially I wanted the movie to be to take place at the end of the movie in a military camp, but there are so many movies about military camps that then I thought, oh, probably the, if I want the, to be a, a, a totally masculine world at the end, it can also be a, a hardcore gay club like the one that I had seen on in cruising. So uh, I thought, yeah, well, let's move it to to to, to that area. And with my line producer and my assistant director, we started going to those clubs to check. Um, yeah. So we found one where we could shoot. It, it, it's, it's funny, like, just as you're talking through that. But, but, uh, but so, yeah, the, the whole movie was more about going from a, like, a, uh, two genders world and colorful world to a red, uh, uh, one single gender world, and uh, with the camera shaking more and more. And, uh, yeah, so. so but 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 uh, I knew also that I wanted to have a very beautiful ending to to make the whole experience more positive than than the experience that those who are going to stay for the next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, 
it's funny you're talking about this as you're talking through it. I, it just makes me think. You finish in this film. There's the there's the pregnancy. There's the star child. You start this film with apes. It's you know. Did you ever draw the lineage back to back to 2001? No, 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 I didn't think of that. Yeah, but the 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 is that something you did in production, or is that something you did while editing? Uh, no, I knew that. Um, no, I I would start the scenes. Uh, mostly, they're always in the same sense. I would like spin the camera around, and uh, I would make sure, at least on a, on a piece of paper, that I could match them in an invisible way. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a way to the, to do the style time splits that would be evident. But it also works the other way, it's weird because it, because the camera is almost turning in all the, uh, the, at the beginning and at the end of the scenes in the, in the same sense. Uh, uh, it also works when you reverse the scenes. Okay, we got time for, for a couple more, so let's keep them really quick. Right, right here, yeah? responsible for the movie. I'm not responsible for the di dialogues that were fully improvised by the actors on the set. So, uh, for example, that particular scene, what she says, I didn't tell her one line. She just improvised that, so the, you should ask her the, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, well, why did she say that? Yeah. But uh, uh, also, the, when we showed, for example, that subway scene, uh, we showed it five times with another kind of dialogue. And um, mostly when I, when I do the last shot, I tell the actors, please from now on, on the last take, do whatever you want. Don't, don't do it as the previous one. So that, that was the last take, and uh, the Albert Ponte, who plays Pierre, said, oh, can, can I ask them sexual questions? I said, and the, the, he didn't do it for all the other takes. And I said, it's going to be funny. He said, it's going to be funny because uh, uh, and sometimes someone might get upset, so it's going to be funny, so he did it. <laughs> and so uh, all, all, his re all her reactions and his and um, Cassell's reactions to, to, to what he said are all natural. Okay, uh, and, uh, yeah? Um, you don't know the screening, so one more question. Who's got the best question in the room? <laughs> <laughs> got it? Okay, r r r someone yelled my name, so I'm a sucker for that. Oh, 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 here, hi. <laughs> The role of music in your films is so important. Can you talk about the process and stuff? This is probably the first and only time uh, I asked someone to do music for the movie. Uh, initially, uh, for, for all my other movies, I just used existing tracks that, that are, I try in the editing process and they work, they don't work. Then I, I, I try to find the rights. But in the case of this movie, um, like the pre production was so short that we started shooting. But and I, I said, well, we'll see later what what we can put in the movie. But I knew that I wanted that song by Etienne Dao based on a Cap song uh, at the beginning. So we negotiated just the rights for that um, scene. 
and two weeks later we were shooting, or one week later we were shooting the party scene, and I, I wanted very danceable techno music. And I had met Thomas Bangalter, one of the two members of that punk, who had already released two records and said, oh, is there a chance I can get some of those great tracks that you, you, you already made and you already published uh, for the, 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 the party scene? And he said, oh, okay, well, he was the only owner of, of, the, of those rights. Uh, so he said, yeah, okay, well, uh, t t take them and then we'll fix uh, the, the, the negotiation, whatever. And uh, so uh, we shot that scene with people dancing for real on his tracks. And then uh, we became friends and I invited him to see the editing. And the first cut of the, of the, the first edit of the movie was done almost like one week after shooting because uh, once uh, 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 you put all the scenes in, in, a, in a reverse order, chronologic order, the, the, it was evident that mostly it was the last take that was a good take for every, every scene. So um, uh, he came to the editing room and said, oh, do you want me to do more music for you? And he said, oh yeah, please, uh, uh, help yourself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see the scenes, know them, and, and just check the lens and bring me. And so he, he composed like eight other tracks and said, oh, you can put them wherever you want. And so I tried some uh, some tracks in one scene and, uh, and finally I used them all. Uh, I used them all in, in the movie, so he composed uh, tracks that uh, I put in the rest of the movie, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and then uh, I added the, the 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 symphony by Beethoven at, at the end of the movie, right? and, and then so, so the, the, the 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 soundtrack was released as a Thomas Bach uh, movie soundtrack. That's incredible. I, the way that the whole film is it pulled together, I mean, it's really. It's an old school. But, but, but for example, the the the, 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 the scene in the, in the rectum, uh, yeah, when we shot it, there was no music at all. Right. So that uh, he composed all that track. Yeah, it's incredible how the film came together, and, and it's uh, you know it's it's guerrilla filmmaking, it's filmmaking at any cost, and it comes through in the film. But the thing is, is that it has preserved and endured to a point where today it's as powerful as it ever was when it came out, which is a real testament uh, to the show. What, what made the movie strong emotionally speaking is also that it was a bank robbery and I didn't bring any paper that people could stop me with because you know when you write the data what's in everybody's considering well, well why did you put this line or well, like you know we're asking about the lines of Monica. Uh, if if I had written for example the the the, 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 the data of this movie on a, on a screenplay, no one, no one would have financed the movie even if it was on Monica. So the, the, my, my, I was lucky because I, had, uh, I just have three pages and, and so that, that's, any, it, that's it. Movie. So the moral of the story is, if there's any aspiring filmmakers in here, don't write a script and rob a bank. That's <laughs> it. Gas Connelly, thank you. It's really hard to do like radical movies with platforms or with regular film distributors, you have to find a very rich person. It's been such a long time in having you out here. It's such an honor. I wish we could spend the next three hours doing it, but as I say, we have we have straight cut coming up next. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you.